Tonight's headlines are brought to you in part by Coldwell Energy and McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I am Sally Limis. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. Police respond to an auto pedestrian fatality in Marquee. Also tonight, law lawmakers reach a deadlock on the governor's SOCA delivery. And a constituent says he was threatened by a sitting senator. In sports, girls bring on the volleyball heat at championships. Stay with us. We have these stories and more next. Fast, fun, and easy. That's how your home Wi-Fi should be. So start with an internet plan that fits your budget. Introducing your home Wi-Fi starter pack, also known as WISP. Enjoy up to 25 megabits per second for as low as $35 a month, plus a free router with your wireless subscription. That's hours of movies, games, social media, and more endless fun. Get your Wi-Fi starter pack today only at Docomo Pacific. Better together. Additional conditions may apply. The Wills program is really just to give the assistance that our business partners need uh, to the hardship we've gone through the pandemic. Uh, and to our business partners again, uh, all across, thank you for always being there for the people uh, and continued investment here in the city of my. That's the whole thing about my administration, is to give opportunity for those that are willing to give some risk and also assist those that continue to call in on my home. Brought to you by the Office of the Governor. And there you have it, McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich from the makers of the world's most stolen fries. The juicy chicken sandwich from the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich from the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich, you'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba. Hi, my name is Annie H. San Nicolas. I'm from Tina, the Honor Bay Fish Market. That's my small fish business. This, our boat is very old, engine. So, like, we thank you for your program that's gonna help us. Can we, uh, you know, renovate our boat and other stuff for the uh, fishing gear, so whatever that we need. More, uh, how do you say this? Good, more uh, quality gears, electric. Because, yeah, but it's over. It's really a big help. I thank you guys. This program is great for the community, and I thank the governor. Brought to you by the Office of the Governor. Half a day to the WAMI and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Monday, October 24th, 2022. A local driver strikes a 39-year-old male in the Marpy area, marking this as Saipan's second road fatality. According to the Department of Public Safety, on October 18 at around 9.45 p.m., 
Police responded to an auto pedestrian fatality across the Kensington Hotel in Marpy. 39-year-old victim Melvin Sakisat was pronounced dead at 12.53 by CHCC's Dr. Cope. Police say the investigation is still ongoing, but here's what we know so far. There was no alcohol involved and the roads were dry that night. The driver is a 32-year-old local male who operated a pickup truck. The case is considered an auto-pedestrian fatality and not a hit-and-run. DPS spokesperson Adrian Pangilinan says any other details will be released when the investigation is complete. Melvin Sakisa was a six-year cancer survivor who is survived by a young daughter and family member. Up on Capitol Hill, lawmakers are not seeing eye to eye on when the governor should deliver the State of Commonwealth address. And now with different dates and different resolutions, the upcoming SOCA is at an impasse. The Senate and House of Representatives has adopted two separate pieces of legislation that calls for different dates of the governor's State of Commonwealth address. Senators granted the governor's request to hold the SOCA on October 31st, while the House adopted a resolution that sets the SOCA for December. With both bodies adopting different dates and resolutions, the governor's request to convene in a joint legislative session to receive the SOCA is at an impasse. Senate President Jude Hofschneider. It's obvious that there's an impasse of uh, how we're going to go about doing this. And there's a very unusual way of an impasse. Uh, I mean, but we hope that it doesn't have to come to this point, but this is where it's at today. Hofschneider, along with other Republican senators, earlier expressed concern on the constitutional language regarding SOCA. Article 3, Section 9 of the CNMI Constitution states, the governor shall report at least annually the Commonwealth Affairs to the legislature. The Senate says delivering a SOCA before a joint legislative session is traditional practice. Uh, we're trying to find a, a law and a statute that, that guides the legislature in doing this. And according to the legal counsel, that there is no statutory uh, requirement as far as um, uh, law in assigning which date or which part of the month of the year, when, uh, uh, other than what just typical being done uh, over the last uh, several times that there was a, uh, a state of the Commonwealth address delivered by a governor, a sitting governor. Hofschneider says he will communicate soon with House Speaker Edmund Villa Gomez on how to go about the impasse. As far as the governor's decision to deliver something in the 31st, that's that's his wish that he's going to do. Now, as far as the state of the Commonwealth address concept or format, uh, it does typically requires or it doesn't necessitate a, a uh, joint session to be received by the legislature. Tinian Senator Frank Cruz says a presenter should be able to decide when the presentation will be. I just uh, want to uh, completely understand who has the authority to set date on time when the governor should present the SOCA. Because in my own opinion, if a person is recording something, then he should set the date on time. Of that. Uh, uh, it's not in the Constitution that mandate us to set time and date. That's correct, right? That's correct. Thank you. The House majority stands firm with their recommendation to hold the SOCA in December. There is a reason why we don't wait until the very last minute in an election year, right before the election, to deliver a State of the Commonwealth Address. And that is because of the obvious appearance of impropriety, of politicking on taxpayer dime. There is, you know, we often, uh, at least on this side of, of the aisle, often criticize this administration for lack of transparency. But in this case, the motivation for calling for a State of the Commonwealth address in the 11th hour right before voting starts is very obviously, um, very, I mean, it's very transparent. One of the main concerns um, that was um, discussed in the leadership meeting last week was that only the speaker was invited to the initially 
scheduled October 21st uh, State of the Commonwealth Address, so-called, and not other members. So he cannot, he cannot, the governor cannot um, call it a State of the Commonwealth absent the members of the both houses of the legislature. And as I mentioned, um, had he picked up the phone and called the judiciary, he would have found out their schedule was booked. And we did, the leadership did call the judiciary to find out about their schedule and see if they were available on October 31st, as the governor requested. However, they were not. And it was decided upon the leadership that December 1st would be the most appropriate date to receive the State of the Commonwealth Address. There's no way the governor's going to give a State of Commonwealth Address absent a full-blown Commonwealth in my audio reports. I don't see how he can do that. I don't see how accurate his State of the Commonwealth Address will be. Absent this very important audits that should be finalized months ago, early on this year. So if we're going to argue about dates, I think it's only fair that December 1st will be a more accurate date for the governor to deliver and allow the, the staff of finance to finalize this NMI audit reports so that the governor can deliver an accurate state of the Commonwealth just. The governor's office issued a release on Friday thanking the legislature for their consideration. He says, however, he will be moving forward in delivering the SOCA on October 31st to provide transparency to the people. He further says if the legislature does decide to hold the SOCA on December 1st, he will also be present. The event is open to the public and will be live streamed. One constituent calls the Senate body on professional and is looking into pressing charges towards a senator who he says threatened him. And then suddenly Victor Hoku decided that what? Yeah, he's going to repeat the same old inappropriate behavior uh, to stand up and say, you know, uh, in that way, same thing what happened to uh, Paul uh, Manglonia, no Senator Paul Manglonia, no, fine, uh, people are angry about that, but at the same time to the people. To the people, to me, you know, I mean, that's uh, crossing the line. Fabian Indeleshu speaks out after being removed from the Senate session while delivering a public comment and feeling threatened by a senator. He stood up and he's you know, just the same thing again, the, the heart charging, you no, know, you know, Mr. Victor, Senator Victor, who's out of control, you no, know, to charge toward my direction. Then he decided you not know, to detour to, uh, to the right, to where you know, there's uh, uh, a hallway. To that no, I, I would think that no, he decided to go that direction because this is a lot of new people uh, trying to take care of me to no, say my piece as far as no, my freedom of speech to say that these people are corrupted. Mm -hmm. That's there's, there's no crime to that. And what did the other senators do? They were just sitting there, no, no, except no, my good no, senator, the um, Paul no, Manglonia, who have experienced the same no, encounter with this guy, uh, being told no. Indelesha says police were called to assess the situation and they will be filing his complaint. But he plans to take it into his own hands. Well, I'm not going to settle for that and a, a good lawyer would uh, hopefully no, um, no have to challenge that no, right here. Yeah, you want to show the, the complaint? Yeah, yeah, it's just uh, disturbing the peace. It's simple. Yeah, what are they trying to do? Cover this new crap up that is just simple as disturbing the peace? No, my peace is not no, no <laughs> it's not just disturbing the peace, it's threatening me and my life. KSPN reached out to Senator Victor Hokug for a comment on the matter, but to no avail. As for Senate President Jude Hofschneider, he says his job is to maintain order in the chamber. And I'm very, very specific when it comes to public comment, stick with the agenda stick with the contents of the order of business, what's included in, in any meeting's agenda. Obviously, I had to excuse him because that wasn't the case. It was being out of order. So I asked him that his, his time on the public comment no longer, uh, you know, it's done. So that was as far as uh, the proceeding goes. Anything after that, 
outside or anywhere. Well, we went on with the session and we finished what we needed to do today. More tonight with Governor Torres after his town hall meeting. Who outside of your family, who is a leader or somebody that ins has inspired you in your life? Outside of a brother or a dad or your wife? Well, that's a good question. Uh, well, uh, I gotta think about that. You're, you're a young governor. Is there anybody who inspired you to go into politics? You know, um, so uh, like the late Dave, Dave uh, Pakpak and Dave Camacho, um, again, we were at Saratasi driving down from Saratasi to Cobraville. It was raining. I was back in the truck, right on the bed, and I was 26 years old. And I was sharing my ideas about Article 12, about all these other things, and he said, why don't you run for Congress? And Because um, I feel the passion that you have, and I will support you. I will stand next to you. And a guy that is retired, a guy that doesn't go anywhere, literally, doesn't go anywhere, stays home. Uh, and that evening I went home and I asked my wife if, if I can run. And she asked me, run to where? <laughs> so I said, run for Congress. And, but that push, I think that, that day changed my life because Uncle Dave passed away already, believed in me, someone that's not politically tied, someone that doesn't want anything, doesn't care for anything in terms of wanting something in return, but believed in me and that would stand next to me. That meant so much to me. Um, and that, I uh, asked my wife, asked my, my parents-in-law, and then of course my brothers, and we flew to Boise, asked my parents, and that's what started that political um, movement in me getting into politics. Who do you think's your toughest competition? Oh, both, I would say both. Uh, at this point, uh, any time that you have someone running for the same position, um, they're all competitors, right? They all have their uh, their supporters. And so for Vinny and I, we continue to do what we believe is right for the people of the Commonwealth and stay focused. I think that's one thing that, um, that him and I have, is staying focused and addressing the issues head on. Coming up, a Japanese block party right here in the heart of Yerevan. Stay tuned. Need a new phone? Trade in now and get up to $500 off our best 5G devices. Trade in your older phone in any condition and step up to better savings and speeds only our 5G network can provide. Check out our website and catch up on the best mobile experience. Trade in now. Docomo Pacific, better together. Hi, my name is Annie H. San Nicolas. I'm from Tina, the Ana Bay Fish Market. That's my small fish business. This, our boat is very old, engine. So, like, we thank you for your program. That's gonna help us. Can we, uh, you know, renovate our boat and other stuff for uh, fishing gear, so whatever that we need. More, uh, how do you say this? Good, more uh, quality gears, electric. Cause yeah, but it's over. It's really a big help. I thank you guys. Boost program is great for the community, and I thank the governor. Brought to you by the Office of the Governor. Papa Day CNMI, I'm Officer Igito. Driving under the influence of marijuana is against the law. Driving high can impair your judgment, motor coordination, the ability to concentrate, and slow your reaction time. Therefore, it can impair your driving skills. We are not out here to get you. We're out here to protect you. Don't drive high, CNMI. Drive high, get a DUI. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the CNMI Department of Public Safety. The Wills Program is really just to give the assistance that our business partners need uh, to the hardship we've gone through the pandemic.
to our business partners again uh, all across. Thank you for always being there for the people uh, and continued investment here in the Silomai. That's the whole thing about my administration, is to give opportunity for those that are willing to give some risk and also assist those that continue to close in on my home. Brought to you by the Office of the Governor. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. The United States Census Bureau has released the official data on the Commonwealth's demographic, social, economic, and housing characteristics. Let's take a look at the numbers. Census data from 2020 shows a decline in the CNMI's population and poverty rate. In 2020, the total count of people in the CNMI was 47,329, which is a 12% decrease from 2010, where the total population was around 53,000. The largest race group is the Asian population, reporting more than 15,000 as Filipinos. Followed by Asians are the Chamorros as the second largest race group. Census data shows that 12,000 people have identified as Chamorro alone with no additional detailed race group. 17,000 people have identified as Chamorro with another race such as Palawan or Asian. As for economic characteristics, household income in the CNMI has increased from 23,000 in 2009 to 31,000 in 2019. The percentage of families in poverty has declined from 44.4% to 33.7% in 2019. 96.7% of households has at least one type of computer, and 84% has broadband internet subscription. There is currently no post-pandemic data, and the next census survey will be in 2030. The 2022 Japanese Autumn Fest was held over the weekend at the Paseo de Marianas. Traditional Japanese food and games were some of the highlights of the event. Here is a sights and sounds of the Autumn Fest. I'm operating the Saipan Award team by local guests, but our main lead is the team from Tokyo, Japan. And this, finally, after three years suffering COVID, the Japanese, they are coming here Saipan by United Direct Flight. So we are really happy, six members from Japan in Japan, and Saipan said my kids together to make collaboration to perform.
away, folks. Don't go anywhere. We have sports up next. Fast, fun, and easy. That's how your home Wi-Fi should be. So start with an internet plan that fits your budget. Introducing your home Wi-Fi starter pack, also known as WISP. Enjoy up to 25 megabits per second for as low as $35 a month, plus a free router with your wireless subscription. That's hours of movies, games, social media, and more endless fun. Get your Wi-Fi starter pack today only at Docomo Pacific. Better together. Additional conditions may apply. The Bills program is really just a gift that assistance that our business partners need uh, through the hardship we've gone through the pandemic. Uh, and to our business partners again, uh, all across, thank you for always being there for the people uh, and continued investment here in the city of my. That's the whole thing about my administration, is to give opportunity for those that are willing to give some risk and also assist those that continue to close in on my home. Brought to you by the Office of the Governor. At one of Saipan's beaches, this mother lays about 100 eggs under the cover of darkness. She hides her nest as best she can and then slowly makes her way back to the ocean. The eggs hatch and the babies head for the sea where they will face a daily dose of danger. Just one in a thousand will make it to adulthood. Those that do will one day lay their own eggs. Sea turtles are protected under CNMI law. If you see one that is stranded or if you see illegal activity, call the hotline at 287-8537. My name is Annie H. San Nicolas. I'm from Tinia. We are on a bay fish market. That's my small fish business. This, our boat is very old, engine. So, like, we thank you for your program that's going to help us. Can we, uh, you know, renovate our boat and other stuff for uh, fishing gear, so whatever that we need. More, uh, how do you say this? Good, more uh, quality gears, electric. Because, yeah, but it's over. It's really a big help. I thank you guys. Boost program is great for the community and I thank the governor. Sizu's master. Brought to you by the Office of the Governor. Tonight's sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Point of sports, sports fans. fans. It's volleyball championships for girls volleyball, and they sure know how to spike up the game. The Marianas High School Gymnasium was filled with delegations from different schools in the scene of May. For this school year's PSS Girls High School Volleyball League on Saturday. The most awaited match was the championship game between Saipan International School Lady Geckos and the defending champions, Grace Christian Academy's Lady Eagles. Before the championship match, PSS Athletic Director Nick Rose has this to say about this year's tournament. We are concluding day three of the school year 22-23 Girls High School Volleyball Championships in partnership with the Northern Mariana Islands Volleyball Association. And uh, I tell you, we started with uh, nine teams on Thursday, and we have whittled it down to the final two standing. The SIS Geckos came in ranked number four, 
and uh, they just beat the number three ranked Agape school uh, to make it into the championship. But the Grace Christian Eagles are uh, back to back to back. It just keeps going back. You know, Caesar Libet and the Eagles have been flying high for for five years at least that they've just been dominating volleyball. And so I think the SIS Geckos got their work cut out against the uh, unbeaten number one ranked Eagles, but we're sure excited to be hosting it uh, right here at the Marianas High School Gymnasium. In the first set, the Lady Eagles started strong. SIS Geckos played very well too and not ready to give up. But the GSA Eagles prevails with 21 points against the Geckos 13 points. During the second set, the Lady Eagles unleashed their power led by their experienced seniors, Katriel Forrest, Vicky Wang, Solel Lamar, and Hygen Elliott, and sealed their win against the SIS Geckos with a score of 21-8. For six consecutive years, the GCA Lady Eagles proves that their team is unbeatable. That is because of their hard work, dedication, and teamwork. Well, it's really sad, but I, we're so happy because we gave them the last championship. Actually, for those, Seniors, they have six in a row right. because they were two in the JV. They were actually, yeah, six years in a row for them. Uh, so they worked so hard. I think you can tell they were undefeated, but this morning, they're still practicing. They woke up early, they still practice. It's hard work and dedication. They really want it. I'm just telling them, guiding them, it's their thing. Uh, and I'm so proud of them. Meanwhile, SIS Gecko's head coach Stacy Eno is very proud of her team and their accomplishments. Being uh, second place is a big deal. Last year was our first year with me as coaching. I came from Off Island and learning the girls just stepping in was a big thing. So every year we're just aiming to get one step towards first place. And last year was third place, this year is second place and we're hoping for first next year. But I'm really proud. Um, it was a long season, a hard season, a lot of a lot of illness going around, a lot of injuries, a lot of people off islands. So when we pulled together for the tournament, it was really nice to see the results that we did. So I'm very proud of them and they should be proud of themselves. Here are the highlights from the volleyball championship game. From all of us at KSPN, congratulations to the GCA Lady Eagles for winning your sixth championship. and its generous partners are committed to supporting programs that include health, education, and sports. Initiatives that promote arts and culture, the environment, and tourism will benefit our community and our residents. Giving back and making a difference will help ensure that the island paradise we call home will be a better place to live.
for the case fan weather report partly sunny with scattered showers east southeast wind 13 to 15 miles per hour with gusts as high as 22 miles per hour tonight mostly cloudy with isolated showers east southeast wind 9 to 13 miles per hour with gusts up to 18 miles per hour high 87 low 78 the humidity is 80 percent Tomorrow, partly sunny with isolated showers, east, southeast wind 10 to 14 miles per hour with gusts as high as 18 miles per hour. High 88, low 78. The marine forecast has combined seas of 4 to 6 feet will taper down to between 3 and 5 feet by Tuesday once the north swell diminishes. Staying as such through midweek before another distant northeast swell brings seas up by a foot or two thereafter. Southeast wind 10 to 15 knots, wind waves 2 to 3 feet, east swell 3 to 5 feet, and the north swell 2 to 3 feet. The sunrise will be at 6 10 a.m., high tide 6 47 p.m., low tide 12 51 p.m., and the sunset 5 51 p.m. And that does it for our Monday edition of the new sports and weather here in the Marianas. We hope you have a good night, and we'll see you back here on Wednesday.